Hello all. Welcome back to Career with Vasanth YouTube channel. My name is Vasanth. I hope you all doing well. So as you know, this is a video series where we are discussing about system design. It's quite some time that I hadn't made a video about system design. In this particular video, I'm going to discuss about the auto complete system design. Where, as you all know, auto complete is nothing but whenever you go to a particular site, you search something, whatever the suggestion that come whenever you start typing, that is nothing but the auto complete. There's so many intricate problems with this particular architecture. I'm going to discuss all of them step by step in this particular video. So let's start without wasting further time. And if you're somebody who is watching me first time on the internet, please subscribe to my channel, Career with Vasant. I'll be making content about front end interview preparation. A lot of good content is in my channel. So for subscribing, you will not hurt anything. Okay. Now, so what is auto suggestion? This is auto suggestion. Okay. Let's say I search now career and you see like a lot of the suggestions coming here, right? All of these are coming because Google is able to predict after you search certain characters, what are the possible options that you can discuss further? That's the intent of this particular auto suggestion. Okay. Now let's go through it one by one. Okay. What is that? Or uh, how to solve this particular problem? Unlike my other problems, just to keep the video short, I'm not basically discussing about the functional requirement, non-functional requirement, etc. Let's stick to the core functional requirements of auto complete as a problem and how to solve it. Okay. Now. A lot of these things I've drawn already just half an hour before this recording the video to make again the video a little shorter. Okay. Now, if you see, let's say you use a type of something like career, what are all the options that you're seeing below? This is nothing but the auto suggestions that are coming from the back end, obviously. Now, let's say we have to solve this problem. What we as a client or front end developer would do? The first thing that most people would think is this, okay, where we have a client and a server, correct? Now, whenever user types something, the client makes an API call. Server checks, are there any relevant res results that matching that particular response and they send back to the client, okay? For example, if you look at this thing, let's say you typed CA carrier or just CA. Whatever the things that matches that particular, uh, whatever the, the type things that you typed, all of that will be returned. For example, let's say I type CA. As soon as I have CA, a network call is made and all these possible options are returned from the backend and that is shown on the UI. As simple as that, it is done, okay? But if it is so easy, then probably we would not be making a video about it, correct? There are certain, some more problems associated with that. What is that? Like for example, for every keystroke, if you make an API call, for example, I typed C. If I'm seeing all this, then I made an API call. I'm making another API call. I'm making another API call. Let's say I did this, okay? For every keystroke, if I start making an API call, then I would end up making so many API calls. And lot of the words that I would type still might have not become a pop proper something known. Like for example, CA, CA is not responding to anything. Probably I would type another character. Then it responds to something, corresponds to something, correct? So where I'm coming from is probably it should become some sense. Then we should start making an API call. So one is like, let's say I, after I entered minimum three characters, depends on the product requirement, but I'm just saying in general, after somebody enters three characters, we'll start making an API call, point number one. Point number two is what most people would think. Even after you, after three characters, you start making an API call. Even after that, let's say for every character, if you keep making an API call, then you end up making so many calls, correct? Instead, we could limit the number of calls using the very popular technique of debouncing, correct? What is the problem with this approach? Calls are made very frequently, correct? Calls are happening very frequently. So you could avoid this problem with the help of debouncing. What is the debouncing approach tool do here is, we have a client, we have a server, make API call after a configurable, configurable duration of time. What do I mean by configurable duration of time? Uh, the typical debouncing in most websites is around 250 milliseconds, which is one fourth of a second. Every one fourth of a second, you make an API call. That's what the most applications would do. Okay. But again, we cannot be so strict about that one fourth of a second or 250 millisecond because for some product requirement, they want to reduce it to 100 millisecond. So that number should be configurable. Either you get it from your backend or you get it from your sites like Firebase, anywhere you get it. But that number should be configurable and you should be able to change that. Okay. So now once after that number is configurable, now for every keystroke, after three character, every keystroke, you are not making an API call. You are making an API call after 250 millisecond. So it doesn't matter you type two characters, doesn't matter if you type 10 characters. If you're, if you're like super fast in typing, doesn't matter how many other characters you're able to type. After that, we make an API call. Okay. So again, I'm reiterating approach one where the client makes an API call to server, server responds back. No optimization here. But here, the client is making an API call 
only after a pre predefined duration of time. So for example, after every three seconds, you're going to make an API call. Sorry, every after every 250 millisecond, you make an API call. Doesn't matter whatever the character's type so far, and you return the results. This is about approach to use the help of the debouncing. But if you observe here, there is still the, the fundamental problem exists. The fundamental problem is for the same character that you're typing. For example, I come here, I typed CA, I typed CAR, CARD, and I again removed D and R. So API call was earlier made for CA. And now after I enter RD and I remove D and R, again the same API call is made for CA. In a fraction of probably a second, highly unlikely the data on the backend might have changed. Like for example, if I made the call with CA at 10 a.m. and then 10 a.m. one second, definitely the data would not change in most of the system, including systems like Google also. Correct? So unnecessarily I make an API call for the data that probably already we could have stored on locally. Correct? So the problem is approach two is calls are made very frequently for the same string. Okay, repetitively maybe I can remove. Same call for the same string is being made multiple times. So what is, how do we solve this problem? The common suggestion to solve this problem is using the cache. Correct? So that is our next approach. That is the approach three. Okay. In the approach three between the client and the server. Okay. Between the client and the server, we have a cache. Okay. What is the cache here? Whenever user types a particular string, that particular request comes to this local cache, checks whether the data is present on the cache. If it is present, then it will return the result immediately. Okay. If that for that particular string that is not there on the, on the local cache, then it will make an API call to server and then it will return the result. Okay. I've intentionally missed one thing here in this process. Okay. If you know before I even, even before I explain that, Please mention that in the comment section. If not, I, I will explain it now. Let's say first you made an API call. Let's say user type something. You check whether that exists in the cache. If it exists in the cache, you're going to return it. If not, you're going to make an API call to server. And if whenever the server sends the result, you should store that in the cache and then you should return it to the uh, client or putting other way, both are on the client only. You should store that in the cache and then you, you should use it or Storing on the cache and using can happen in parallel as per your product requirement. Okay. So if I had to draw that, let's say whenever the result comes here, correct? Now, if you observe carefully here, what I have done, I made an API call to server. First, I made an after as soon as you type something, I checked whether that exists in cache or not. If it not exists, I made an API call to server, got the data, and I saved it on cache, and then I passed it to the client. You put in other words, these two actually are on the client only. But for the program to process the result, I passed after I make sure the value is stored on the cache. But if your product requirement is not so stringent, you could actually do the both in parallel. Like for example, you initiate a request to save the value on the cache. And you can also meanwhile uh, use that value as well. So both happens in parallel. Next time whenever you make a call, the assumption is the value is already stored in the cache and that particular thing can be returned. Okay. This is the approach three. Okay. So again, I'll reiterate it quickly. The approach one, approach to approach three. Approach one, just make an API call, get the data. Approach two, use debouncing so that uh, some amount of delay is saved actually. Okay. Um, some amount of the unwanted API calls are saved. Approach three is where we are caching the results. Now, Caching also is another thing. How do we cache? Like we, do we store it in array? No. We actually use a map here. Like JavaScript map, I'm sure most of you are aware. ES6 has introduced a concept of mapping in JavaScript where we could store key and value pairs. So here, if you observe the key is whatever the user has typed, value is whatever returned from the server. So the advantage of using map is the, the, the complexity with which we'll be able to find the value from map is big of one. But for array, it is big of n. So next time, whenever user searches CA, I could just like, like, uh, let's say this is a map like const search cache. Okay. All I have to do is search cache dot get of the key. Okay. Whatever the key, for example, CA, I would immediately get completely this result. Okay. So this is the advantage where we are able to get the complete result of the map in just big of one. And then we can use the same for the processing. Okay. 
Now, again, the question comes in like, what's the, what is the right cache to use? Like the multiple caches, right? Like we have the as efficient as the local databases or as preliminary as that of a local storage. Okay. Again, depends on your requirement. If you are somebody like Google where none of your results are going to be saved after a particular session, then you could just use even the simplest Redux where for only for that particular session you're going to store whenever user leaves the tab or user closes it it is gone we are not going to store anywhere for some reason you have the search box in only one of your page you even don't have to use redux just use the local state variable where you store the values once user leaves the page the entire thing is gone but if you are an application where which is targeted to some b2b sort of an application where user do not uh, have like a lot of things to search they keep searching like common items repeatedly then you could use some efficient techniques to store this. Like you could use a, a database like SQLite or Watermelon DB where you store the data results very persistently. Next time whenever you user opens it, they can use that particular cache. But there is a disadvantage with the second approach. Like one cache is where it is a temporary cache. So it's very easy. You leave the page, you clear it. For the permanent cache, then whenever next time user opens the thing and they search a CA, let's say user opens it after a month. There's a chance where a lot of data might have updated by then. So users should not be looking at the old data whenever actually the new data is present on the server. For that cache invalidation or cache expiry also you need to take care. When to expire the cache, it can be configurable or it can be a fixed number. Like after every 24 hours, you're going to invalidate. This is broadly depends on the product requirement, how often the data would update, that often you can clear the complete cache. Okay. Whenever it is a just run in the memory sort of like in the google search sort of thing then you don't even have to worry about clearing the cache as you store it in redux when they close it is removed or you store in a state variable when they remove the page it is gone okay whenever you have to store it persistently come up with the expiry logic now with this also there is a very interesting problem see you made a call with a string one and its result hasn't come yet you made another api call like if you go back here, you made one API call. It's not present on cache. So you made a call to server and server hasn't returned yet. You made another call. Let's look at the diagram here. I've just removed the cache block here. Assume the cache block is present. User search string is there present and you return. Okay. Whenever it is not there, you made a request one. Request one return has, data hasn't returned yet. And you made another request called request two. Now, Let's say on screen, for example, you typed CA, you made a network call, the data hasn't come yet. By then you typed another CA RD, another API call was made. And now if you observe here, request one, request two, first the response of the request one will come. So in our example, the res response to the re CA will come followed by CA RD. But on the search string, on the input box, we have CA RD. We cannot show CA's result for CARD. I'll reiterate if somebody got confused. Let's say I typed CA here. I made an API call for the backend to get the results. Then I typed CARD. Another API call was made. Even before the first API call return result was returned. Okay. Now the problem is I'm expecting results of CARD. But I have the results of CA. If I end up showing that, then I'm going to be in trouble because user is not expecting that. That is a problem. So how do we solve this problem? Okay. One common way that most people suggest is let's say there is one call that is already in progress and we are trying to make another call about the first call. Like uh, we, let's say every time you make sure only one call is active. So you made call one, call two, and by before you make the call to about the call one, there are multiple ways to uh, about the call. You can go ahead and read about it. So where the complete call is canceled. So now only the request to response will be used. But think through, think it, uh, think it loud. There is a problem with this because see, what do you mean by about? Client has sent a request already. It has already read the server. Server might be already processing and it might already send the response somewhere it is in middle. So we are not saving much in sometimes by canceling the request. Instead, what is the optimal way? Okay, if you know the answers to this, please mention that in the comment section even before I explain. Okay. For some simplicity or more better understanding, I've written this. So request one is made at 10.01 p.m. Request two is made at 10.02 a.m. So both are made at a.m. 10.01 a.m. 10.02 a.m. Now we will get a response. Correct? Now we'll be getting a response of request one. Response of request one at 10.03. 
I know most practical APIs will not have this much delay, but I'm just saying followed by the request to correct. So same thing, whatever I explained so far. So the one way is aborting. Aborting is not an option. When you cannot abort, the better way according to me is, see, we are already using the concept of caching here. Whenever I typed something and when the response comes, instead of just aborting it, why can't I store the value in the cache? Whenever the old APIs response come, I'll use it in the cache. And whenever the latest strings response comes, I will again keep it in the cache and I'll also use it to show on the UI. But the problem is, there's a request one and request two. How do we determine which request to process? Like the response for which request to use and which request to ignore, correct? The best way, the multiple ways to this, but the one of the most suggested ways is 10.01 AM, you made an API call. Pass the client timestamp to API. So request one has made it 10.01, whatever the timestamp of that, you send it to server. And whenever you made the request to two, send that to server, okay? Maintain a local timestamp. Okay. A const local timestamp. Okay. And you maintain whatever the timestamp. Like actually you get the complete date object. For simplicity, I'm just writing 10.01, 10 10.0001. 0, 0, 0, okay. So now let it make it let. We so according to our local timestamp, right now it was this. And whenever the next call was made, the local timestamp variable got updated to 0 02, correct? And when the response comes, so if the response timestamp is also same as the whatever the timestamp we have, process it. If it is not, put it in the cache and ignore or wait. So when the request one was made, local timestamp was 1001. Request two was made, the response was 1002. Now request one's response came. Whatever the client timestamp that we sent to the server, server is also sent, just return that timestamp to back to us. Okay, so in that case, the 1002, whatever the server would send back the 1001, it was correct. So in that case, it will mismatch, just show it in the cache. Whenever we get the timestamp as 1002, use it. Okay, again, this problem can be further extended. Correct, what if we don't get a response to a particular thing? So then, in, in that case, also, let's say you made two API call request one and request two. Request one's response came, but request two response did not come. Just because request two's response did not come, we cannot use request one's response. Correct? Then you should have a proper way of handling the errors. Okay, now I'm going to quickly summarize. As I'm hitting 20 minutes, I'll quickly summarize. So far, if you like the content, please like the com uh, video and uh, comment whatever you felt honestly. And uh, if you're really liking it, please share it with your friends as well. So I'm going to like go through all of it at once. Approach one, make an API call, get the results. One of the worst approach. Use debouncing, comparatively better. Debouncing plus caching, much better. Debouncing plus caching and whenever there's a request that has taken more time to respond, just store the response in the, in the cache instead of like aborting the request. Okay. All these four has been, have been one of the, the, the approaches that you can follow. And one important thing that I want to say, there is one problem with the approach that I'm mentioning where we are passing the client timestamp to server and where server is returning the same thing back to us. Instead of this, do you feel there is a better approach? There is better approach actually. If, if you know that, Please mention that in the comment section. Okay. That's all I wanted to explain this particular video. If you like the video, please like the video, comment whatever you felt honestly. Share the video with your friends if you, if you like, like if you think that they can make, get, make use of it. And um, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel, Career with Vasan. Thank you so much. Catch you in the next video.